It's more difficult to be mindful with technology today than at any other point over the past decade, but that doesn't stop me from trying. In this video, I wanna dive into my digital minimalist phone setup to see what's changed over the years, what hasn't, and how I try to use these tools without them making me miserable. Emphasis on the word try. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More about how I built my new website with them in a minute. First, let's talk about my phone. I have an iPhone 13 mini, one of Apple's least popular phones, so unpopular that they've actually halted production on their latest release. While it might not be a crowd favorite, I really like it. I've never been a fan of the ever-growing sizes of screens over the past decade, and when the mini option became available, I was stoked. I can easily hold the phone in one hand, I can reach my thumb all the way across the screen, and it actually fits in my pocket. Even better, a smaller screen means that I actually use my phone less often. I rarely use it to stream shows, watch videos, or passively consume content. I think the bigger that my screen would become, the more likely I would be to use it for those purposes. Now, instead, I mostly use it as a practical tool. Okay, let's take a look at some of the notable apps on my phone, starting with the dock at the bottom. To Do has been my to-do list of choice over the past few years. I like it because of its simplicity. I can easily track my tasks, move them around, and create other tasks for things like books. This right here is my reading list. I actually currently only use To Do for my personal tasks as I've moved all my work-related tasks to another app that I'll talk about in a minute. Apple Notes is how I track my ideas for my channel and business. Whenever I come up with an idea, I'll jot it down. Then I review and expand on them later. I've been using this system of organizing my notes for years and it's worked really well for me. And so if it's not broken, I'm not gonna fix it. I've almost completely ditched my wallet thanks to the next two apps. First, with Apple Pay, I've got all of my credit cards stored so I can pay for nearly everything I need to with the chip in my phone. And right next to it is an app called Service NSW. This is one of the local government apps here in Australia that allows me to store a digital version of my valid driver's license. So now that I don't need my credit cards, physical cash, or my driver's license, whenever I leave the house, I don't need to bring my wallet with me, which is really nice. One less thing to think about. So there are really two different types of people in this world. Those that keep their alarm app tidy and psychopaths. As you can see, this is my phone, beautifully organized. And this is my wife's phone. She is a psychopath. While I don't use my alarm clock to wake up in the morning these days, you may have seen a video that I recently made about that, I do use it as my primary way to remind myself of meetings and phone calls. Chrome is my go-to browser on my phone. And hey, would you look at that? It's my new website that I recently built with Squarespace. I mean, what are the chances? One of the great things about Squarespace is that they make it really easy to build beautiful websites that show up looking great on any device. I mean, this website is a work of art. I chose to use Squarespace to build my websites long before they were a sponsor for my channel because they make it so easy to bring your ideas to life. They've got hundreds of professionally designed templates to choose from. You can buy your domain name directly on their platform. And they even make it super easy to get your custom email set up. It's really user-friendly, so no need to deal with any of the technical backend stuff, which is great because I'm terrible at it. One of the main purposes of my website is to promote my newsletter, which you can join with this built-in form. I honestly think everyone should have a website. It can help you land a better job, build an audience, and share your story with the world. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattdiavella to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When you sign up for your first website using the link in the description below, you're also supporting this channel, so thanks for considering. I've started using the Calm app quite a bit over the past couple of years, and I really love it. They of course have some great meditations that come in handy, but outside of that, Nat and I actually turn on rain sounds every night before we go to bed, and we found that the Calm app has a really great one that works for us. I particularly love listening to the sleep remixes like Casey Musgrave's Golden Hour on long haul flights between the US and Australia. The tracks go on for an hour plus and help drown out the sounds of crying babies. I've also been known to fall asleep to the whispering sounds of Matthew McConaughey. Hey, don't judge me. You gotta stay relaxed.
I listen to Spotify during my workouts and during work. You can see some of the music I've been listening to lately, Into the Wild, Logic, No Pressure, Lord, and of course, the Lo-Fi Beats playlist here. I love listening to this playlist while I write, check emails, and do other work-related tasks. My text conversations are spread out across a couple apps here, messages, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, nothing special there. I really love the Philips Hue light bulbs. The app's not perfect, but the light bulbs themselves are awesome. I often use them in lamps that are in the background of my videos, and they help me dial in the perfect intensity and color. That's also what makes them really convenient when winding down to go to bed. I've recently started to track a lot of my biometric data. So with my Apple Watch, I can track my heart rate and my sleep. Fit Index is connected to my smart scale to track my weight and body fat percentage. And the Health app brings together all of this data into an organized layout. My sleep isn't too bad, my steps could definitely be improved, and my weight has been pretty consistent these days. I started to track as much of my biometric data as possible, and there are a lot of different reasons why I did this. One of the main ones was that since I do many, so many experiments for this channel, I thought it would be really interesting to see how my biometric data changes as I do these 30 to 100 day experiments. And so I wanna see how my sleep changes and um, how my weight changes and all those things in between. Uh, and I also just wanna see what tracking alone does. If I track all of my health data over the course of say a year, will that actually improve my health or will it generally stay the same? I've also been tracking my mood daily via this app called Dailyo. Each day I get a notification at 7 p.m. I think about my day, jot down a few notes about how it went, and then I give myself a score based on how I was feeling. I've been keeping this up for a while now and will for sure have an update soon. I think it's gonna be a really fun video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more about how all of this tracking is going for me and some of the interesting lessons that I've learned along the way. The next two apps are for work. So if you've been following along, you know that I built a small team to help me with my courses and content. And right now we have a team of five. And so I had to really think hard about how to collaborate together across three different countries. The first tool that really helps us communicate is Slack. Tons of organizations use it, and many of you probably already have experience with it. We've got a number of different channels to chat about specific projects from our YouTube course to snail mail newsletters to videos for this channel. My business definitely wouldn't be as effective without it. And the next app that I use for work is Asana. And this is where I have moved all of my work tasks to. So I moved from a personal to-do list to Asana because I no longer create in a vacuum. Everything that I do impacts other people on the team. So I wanna make sure that whenever we build out tasks and subtasks, everyone can see what I'm doing. I can see what everybody else is doing. It allows us to collaborate and communicate together and to track how the progress is moving towards specific projects. So moving along to the second and final page of the apps on my phone, Scannable is my go-to for scanning documents. This is definitely an essential app for any digital minimalist. So whenever I have a document that I wanna keep a record of, I typically open up Scannable, snap a photo, it automatically cleans up the image, and then I store it in one of my Google Drives. Arc 2 is a filmmaking app that I use for my slider. So if you've ever seen a shot in one of my videos where the camera is moving while I'm on camera, it was made possible with this app as well as my Rhino Arc 2 slider. I can't say that this is an essential tool for filmmakers, but it's pretty cool. I can program a movement into the slider, tap start on my app, and grab the shot that I need without the help of an additional filmmaker. Since I almost always film by myself, this helps me to get some really thoughtful moving shots. One tool that I found that was really helpful when we were looking for our house was the Sun Tracker AR app. Since natural sunlight was super important for us, we wanted to see where the sun would be at certain times of the day. When we were at an open house, we would open up this app and see exactly where the sun tracked along the day from sunrise to sunset. It was super handy. I think just as important as the apps that I have on my phone are the ones that I don't have. So I don't have social media. I haven't used Facebook in years. I rarely use Instagram and I haven't spent more than 30 minutes browsing TikTok. I just 
don't enjoy my time on social media anymore, so I've almost completely cut it out of my life. And the same goes for streaming. In the past, I've had YouTube, Netflix, and other streaming apps on my phone, and I do download them when I travel, but most of the time I keep them off my phone and only stream on our TV or one of our laptops. I'm not perfect though. If there was one app that I spend the most time on, it'd be the Reddit app, which I've recently deleted. These days, you might find me browsing Reddit via the Google Chrome app. Here, I have been known to spend a couple hours every day in zombie mode, scrolling past hundreds of different posts. And yeah, that's how I keep my phone as simple as possible possible. I don't like to overthink things. I don't often experiment with new apps, but if you have one that you think that I should really try out that's helped you a lot, let me know and I'll experiment with it and see if it's worth adding to my very small list of apps on my phone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.